and then live stream from my phone. So we can get this started now. Um, all right, guys, what's going on? It's Steve Cronin. You know me. You know who I am. Uh, I just wanted to do a kind of like a long form Q and A, um, and I wanted to do a live stream. I, you know, as y'all know, I haven't really made a whole lot of videos the past year, really, um, ever since that YouTube debacle happened, where people like myself and uh, other other YouTubers who are talking about biohacking and nootropics um, were essentially banned from YouTube and had their had their content deleted. And uh, you know, that was really, I had, I had over 400, maybe, maybe 500 videos on my channel and hundreds of them, like 300 plus of them gone. And, uh, you know, I started, I started making YouTube videos in, uh, 2008 or nine. So it really has been about 10 years, but I really never, I really never started to make most of my content until a few years ago, right? Until maybe like three or four years ago. And then I really saw it, started to get rolling. And uh, man, like I don't think I ever really understood or even really communicated to y'all because I couldn't understand how demoralizing that was and how much it really deeply affected me when, um, first of all, like YouTube had banned my entire channel for, for over a week, right? And um, thanks to some of you guys, like some of you guys who subscribed to me, like made videos being like, where did Steve Cronin go, right? Like his channel's gone. Why did YouTube ban Steve Cronin? Why did YouTube ban uh, Jonathan Ballow? Or not Jonathan Ballow, Ryan Ballow, Jonathan Roseland. They both got banned. I was, why don't I just hybrid their names together anyway? Jonathan Ballow. Um, but why did the, why did the, you know, the, the, the main YouTubers who were talking about biohacking and nootropics, why were they banned? And, um, it really, you know, because I spent so many years, like just really hammering in videos, two videos, three videos a week. Um, and just like for years, I mean, it really became a part of my identity. And so when that had just disappeared completely, it was like, whoa. And I don't think I ever really came to terms with that. And then, and then, you know, I luckily I had reached out to to a contact. I had advice, and I'm like, hey, there's something going on here at YouTube with biohackers and nootropics. And um, you know, they wrote the story, and then because YouTube wasn't giving me any response, YouTube was like, you're banned. And I appealed the decision. They're like, you're banned. You're banned. Sorry, we're reviewing it. You're banned. I'm like, what? Um, and luckily, when you know, when Vice wrote that article about what happened. Um, you know, it just, everything, everything, YouTube actually responded, not to me, but to them, and said, uh, hey, you know, it was a mistake that we banned all the nootropics related channels uh, within 48 hours of each other, including Epic Beasts, uh, Jack Epic Beasts, who went with me to this biohacking conference I just got back from in Austin this weekend. And uh, I think that... I think, you know, when my, my channel came back, came back up, but my, but my con most of my content, you know, was deleted, um, it was hard to like get, get rolling again. And, uh, you know, even after my channel was, was reinstated, videos that were still up were still getting flagged and I was banned from live streaming. And there was a point where I couldn't even upload videos. You know, once you get so many YouTube strikes, you can't even upload videos anymore. And um, I was like, well, okay, fine. Like, am I just gonna keep doing this or repost my old videos and then just go through this nightmare over and over again? And it took, it took a lot of time to kind of, you know, get, get reconsider how I'm gonna move forward. So, um, you know, thinking about that for a while, I, 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 you know, I just kind of decided one day I was, I got an email from Body Hacking Con, which is a conference, a biohacking conference in Austin. Um, I believe this year was their third or fourth one. And I got an email from them saying, hey, like, um, you want to press pass to our event? You want to cover it on your YouTube channel? I was like, you know, I haven't done YouTube stuff with biohacking for like a year. Uh, so, but sure. In my head, you know, I, I kind of said yes without thinking about it too much. But in my head, I was like, okay, you know, this could be, I could, I could, you know, I could cover the event, make a little mini documentary, make a little docu-series, do a bunch of interviews. Um, for, for longtime viewers of my channel, you'll know that I went to the biohacking summit, that conference in Finland. Um, and they, they, uh, I, I flew out there with Jack of Epic Beasts and we covered that event. It was amazing. Um, I think Ben Greenfield was their keynote that year. 
Um, this was several years ago, but we, you know, we went there and it was huge. It was like 350, 400 people. Um, and it was like a four day event. I think, I think Jack and I, we were in Finland for like a week. Um, and I, I was like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll go, I'll go to this conference and I'll, I'll do this again. By the way, for those of you watching um, right now, if uh, feel free to type into the chat if you have any questions. Oh, and I just saw that we got we got the first like, so I appreciate that. Thanks for liking this. I, you know, probably should have said this at the beginning, but the um, the more likes a video gets, the more it'll circulate to uh, to the YouTuber subscribers because now you know, especially after all those videos that were deleted. Now, even though even though I have, um, you know, 20,000 subscribers or whatever, um, because, because my, con my content was deleted and all those no view counts were deleted, it messed up with their alg algorithm. So when I started posting videos, even like a year ago, they would get like 100 views, right? And I'd be like, hmm. And I remember someone even commented, someone was like, someone was like, how does a guy who has 20K subscribers get 100 views on a video he makes? And I was like, I'll tell you why. It's because YouTube cuts your view count and cuts your content and then it messes with their algorithm and then no one sees you. And even if you're subscribed to your channel, right? Oh yeah, this is, some, this is like a new, feature, a new feature with YouTube that I haven't even looked into or realized, but apparently you have to hit like some kind of subscription bell, right? To get alerts that someone's, someone's making content for you. So, um, uh, apparently I can make a video and it won't even go to the subscriber feed. So, uh, that's why I say thanks for the likes and thanks for giving the thumbs up because I, I, the more people that thumbs up this video, then YouTube goes, Oh, people are engaging with this video. Oh, okay. People like, and then like people who are subscribed to me who want to see my content actually, you know, see my content. Imagine that. That's crazy. Right. Um, Michelle says, uh, Hey, Mr. Videos. And, oh, and she also says, uh, she has me on bell. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I guess, yeah, I, I don't even, I haven't even read about the feature, right? A lot has changed with YouTube and YouTube's products I, I haven't even paid attention to. Um, but yeah, apparently you have to hit this bell icon to get notifications or alerts or to have me appear in your feed or something like that. Um, Nail uh, DeWitt says, nootropic and biohacking. Hey, welcome back. Uh, I was in Finland too. Oh, great. Right. You were in Helsinki. You were at the, uh, at the biohacker summit. That's great. Um, I had a lot of fun there. Timu was great. T Timu Arena. Um, put on that event as part of the Biohacker Center in Helsinki, Finland, and they are a great group of guys. Those organizer, organize, those organizers are amazing, um, and uh, I had a lot of fun. Now, this the conference, the, the Body Hacking Conference in Austin was much smaller. I went with Jack again. Um, I, I did a couple. I think I did two live streams from there. But I, I got a lot of video. I interviewed, you know, a lot of the speakers and 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 got a lot of video of just talking to people and and recording some of the talks and the workshops and the and the tech area and the vendors and all that stuff. So um, it was pretty cool. It was a smaller event though, maybe about a hundred people I would say um, turned up, which um, also speaks to I think perhaps. Uh, you know, when I, when I first started talking about nootropics and biohacking, even though, even though I was really introduced to it in 2008-ish, right, um, I had, uh, oh, I just realized that my phone battery does not display while I'm streaming from my phone. I wonder how that's going to be an issue. If it cuts off, then the stream's over. But I'm pretty sure I have at least a 50% charge, so it'll be good. Um, so uh, I... I think that, you know, the conference size, I think when I started making videos, even though I discovered nootropics in like 2008, you know, to, for symptom management with Lyme disease, after doctors was like, we can't do anything for you, then, um, except cure you with antibiotics, right? Then uh, I, I started taking them and using them, but they were so underground in like 2008, right? No one was really talking about them too much. And I guess I just started making YouTube videos about nootropics at the right time because I like, it's kind of like, I don't do like stock trading or whatever, but I would imagine it's kind of like buying a share of stock at a low price right before there's a spike, right? And that's kind of how it worked with the nootropics and biohacking. It's like, well, here's this thing I've known about for years and um, I kind of want to start talking about it on YouTube. And I guess I just started talking about it at the right time where it, you know, became, the stuff became really popular. Hence the conference 
attendee size in Finland, right? And then uh, we just kind of went back down to where we are now. So we're kind of maybe at a new baseline. We're not at the peak anymore, but we're at a baseline that's higher than the previous baseline before the peak, right? So um, I thought that was I thought that was interesting. All right, I have been neglecting some of y'all's some of y'all's questions. So uh, we'll take so. Um, Hovi DC zero nine one two. Um, have you tried Fenibut? If so, what are your thoughts? Yeah, and here we go. Okay, so here's an example of a video that's been deleted on off my channel. Right, I did a Fenibut review. I love Fenibut. I have taken Fenibut before. I have. I do have a chronic anxiety issue that's linked to uh, childhood trauma. Right, and um, so. So in, when there are times when I have like, my mind is kind of overloaded with thoughts and, and, and I, do, I do get you know, some anxious ones, uh, Fenibut has been great for me. Um, and, and really, I, I, I am only talking about you know, my experiences with this stuff and, and what I think is great. I think that's probably part of the reason you know, YouTube cracked down on these nootropic channels is, is I had this model where like, I would contact a company or a company would contact me and be like, hey, do you want to talk about our product? And so I think Lift Mode was the company that sent me the Fenibu, and they would send me the product, right? If I was buying all this stuff that I was talking about on YouTube, these hundreds of videos of product reviews, then I mean, I'd be spending like over a thousand dollars, right? So the company would send me a free product and they, um, they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't pay me or anything, but I, I, would, I would talk about it on video and, and talk about my experiences. And there's a lot of technical information about nootropics out there. And I think, I think in terms of, most of it's in, 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 you know, in writing, um, the nootropic subreddit, of which I have been banned from once, as many people have, um, uh, is great for that stuff. Um, and, 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 you know, Ryan Ballow, his, his YouTube content is, is, is more technical than mine for sure. But I saw a space for, you know what, like, here's, how about a dude who already has years of experience with nootropics and, and trying ones and like talking about his experiences, right? Like that is something that people, there, there, wasn't, there wasn't a dude, there wasn't like one person who was like doing that in a wider range. So um, I had a Fenibu video, right? And, uh, and then it was taken down, but I do like Fenibu to answer your question. And uh, this also kind of speaks to how I'm creating content in the future, right? I don't just want to do product reviews, but this whole product review model is totally changed in the way I can do it on YouTube. So what the way it used to work is to be like, hey guys, what's going on, Steve Cronin? Today I'm talking about, I'm like re looking around to see if I can reach for something. I don't know, something, okay? Now today I'm talking about, and I'd be like, Fighter Energy Mints, right? And here we have, uh, this is, yeah, these are just B vitamins and caffeine in mint form. Not, not really, not really a, uh, a, well, <laughs> depending on how you define entropic, right? So that would be, that'd be an example. And then, and then I talk about the ingredients, what was in it, and um, if there was any relevant like scientific data or research, then uh, Michelle said you had so much energy, energy in, in those videos. That's true. Hey guys, it's going to see this And some of that was due to me getting back into YouTube for the first time, and I was kind of like uh, coming from a very genuine space. But in order to feel comfortable on camera, I had like just be animated and crazy, right? It's funny because when I was in Finland at the Biohacker Summer Conference, um, some guy came up to me and was like, "Hey, do you make do you make YouTube videos about nootropics?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Are you Steve Cronin?" I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Man, you're really different in person." And I was like, "Yeah, I don't like walk around public being, hey, what's going? Like, I'm walking to Whole Foods and be like, hey, what's going on? I got this chicken. I'm ready to check out, right?" Um, and even at this conference in, this past weekend when I was there. Um, uh, what, uh, one of the speakers, uh, he came up to me and he was like, hey, uh, so I see you've mellowed out a little bit, right? And he's like, you used to be kind of crazy in your videos. I'm like, no, like, you know, that's just kind of how I am on camera if I get really excited, right? And, uh, but I, ha but I, I, you know, I'm 31 years old now, so I think I have mellowed out a little bit. Um, but it was never an act or anything. Like, it comes from a genuine space. I just think that it's kind of like, how I, I, my brain decided to be comfortable while, while being on camera. Water break. This is water from a wine glass. It's a little full, I can't really show you my, my spinning skills yet. Um, so the way the product reviews would work, so I, t I show the product, I talk about the ingredients, I talk about if there's any relevant scientific literature or, or, or hypothesis or theories, then I, I, would, I would go into detail on those. And then, I would talk about my experiences with the product, and then that'd be it. And then, um, and then, and then, in the bottom, in the description, this is what really pissed YouTube off. Apparently, you can't do this anymore. 
uh, in the description on the bottom, be like, hey, if you wanna buy this, cause that's, you know, the company sent it to me to talk about and I wanted to make content about it and I wanted to try stuff and I wanted to, you know, that I wanted to make the content. Like, hey, if you wanna buy this, you can go to the website. And then I have a link that takes, you know, y'all off YouTube and if you want to, you can check out the product that I talked about. Um, and uh, sometimes, not always, but sometimes if I really liked a product, then there would be an affiliate link, right? And then this was a way, and this was a way where I could um, talk talk about stuff, right? Because because the whole YouTube ad thing, when you're talking about any kind of drugs, legal or, or, or not legal, YouTube's not gonna put ads in your videos, which is fine. I don't really care about ads. Um, I I didn't have to do sponsored videos, which at the time I felt really iffy about. Where it's like I don't want someone to pay me money to make a video about their product. Like that seems weird. So I was like, oh, this affiliate model will work because. If someone wants to buy it, they can, and they spend ten dollars. Um, then you, most affiliate deals are like ten percent, fifteen percent. So oh, if someone sends, you know, spends ten bucks, then you get a dollar. It's like okay, great. You know, this is this is better than like just kind of like getting money up front to talk about a product that might like kind of bias the review. You know, um, and then also I really only had affiliate links for products that I like taking. You know, so it was kind of like it was kind of like. I, it was, it was, there was some kind of ethical dilemma about that and I did it in a way that I felt comfortable with, right? Apparently can't do that anymore. No affiliate links, no taking the way that's my YouTube contact. When you reach, I think like 10,000 subscribers, you get, a, you get a YouTube contact. And the way, the way he explained it to me was like, okay, you can't take, you can't take someone on watching YouTube and then bring them away to another site. If the intention of the video is to take them off YouTube, you can't do it. So if I do a product review with a link to the product, the intention of that video, I thought, was to inform people. But YouTube says, no, 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 no. It's to send people away from YouTube. So, so now essentially, and, if, and I'm not stopping doing product reviews, right? Some, that's part of my content creation, creation plan. It's less of it. But so if I talk about a product, um, now it, you know, there's just there's gonna be no link to take you away to buy it, right? Um, all right, so. <laughs> Go back to some of these questions. It's all stem from the Fenview question, but it's good because because I, I was able to speak a little bit to how how I'm gonna make videos in the future. By the way, ten of you are watching right now. Great, thanks. If the ten of y'all can give me a thumbs up on this video, give me a like. I got four likes right now. That would be great because the more likes that this video gets, more of y'all, my subscribers, uh, will be able to see it because just because I published a video. Does it, cool, we got up to five likes, thank you. Uh, just because I published a video, six likes! Doesn't mean that uh, my subscribers are gonna see it, um, which is kind of weird, so I, I appreciate that. Um, all right, now, going back to the chat, because this is a Q&A, this is, this is an ask me anything, right? Thanks for the likes, guys, we're up to nine, that's perfect. Um, okay, oh, y'all are, are talking amongst yourselves, that's great. Uh, Milk Bone Freestyle says, I learned a lot from you. Thank you, I appreciate that. I try to make my videos educational, but also accessible, right? Like, I, I, I have no interest in like, okay, I, like, I'm a fairly educated person, educated person by some degree in the fact that, you know, uh, I have a master's degree, right? But that doesn't really mean anything. Like, you, you, people who aren't smart can get degrees, right? Like, it's the whole educational system is kind of floppy. Um, so according to like the education system, like, okay, I'm somewhat of an educated person, but I don't have any interest in like doing, doing videos the way like my graduate professors like taught content to me. Like I want to have fun with it. So I'm glad you learned a lot. My videos are meant to be educational. Um, um, but you know, YouTube doesn't think so. So, <laughs> but, uh, oh yeah, Milkbone, Milkbone left a, co a comment on, uh, on, uh, oh, hey, Lou says you saved our channel. Can you tell me more about that? What did I do to save your channel? I'm gonna check out your channel in a second here too. Milkbone also left a comment on one of my live streams from this weekend saying Steve Cronin for president, which I thought was I thought was pretty funny because I don't really. If you go back in time, you can you can, I may, I did make some politically oriented videos like years and years ago, um, but that isn't really a main focus now. But this idea of freedom, freedom to Freedom that you, this idea that you own your body, right? And the freedom to put what you want into your body, right? And, and that's, this is a core element of biohacking, right? Biohacking, the art and science of optimizing your physiological and mental processes in order to achieve a desired result, right? Like, um, are you going to, does a biohacker support the idea of a government or a force um, uh, or an authority 
uh, that has a monopoly on the use of force that says, actually, you know what? If you take that nootropic and put it into your own body, we're going to either fine you or we're going to put you in prison, lock you in a cage, right? And so there is, I think there is a freedom element to that. And, and yeah, that gets a little political and maybe biohacking is political. And you know, maybe I shouldn't steer away from the political side too much because I certainly believe in freedom and I, I don't believe in, in fascist or status governments. And so yeah, I thought it was funny, it's funny, so let's do Corona for president. Um, Oh, and someone says I agree. With, oh, Michelle said I agree with that one. All right, let's go back to some of your questions. Um, I have a lot of, of stuff to talk about, so I can keep going on forever, right? So I want to I want to get to y'all's y'all's questions, so this can be somewhat interactive, right? Um, all right, so uh, Hovi or Hubby DC zero nine one two said I've tried anaracetam, oxyracetam, Nupep, paracetam, no notable effect. I don't take it with a choline source. And it's Nootropics Depot brand, any idea? Okay, so Nootropics Depot um, from my, so, so years ago, I did a lot of research to get kind of like a, a list of high quality vendors, right? Because buying Nootropics online, some of the vendors are really not awesome and the quality of product you're getting is very subpar. I just, I just got a little irritated and I had an irritating thought um, because I don't want to bash the company, so I won't say the company's name, and I don't want to bash the uh, the where the where they sourced it from because I know the pharmacy's name. But there was a company that was selling modafinil online, okay, and they sourced it from a particular lab. And uh, you know, at the time, I don't right now currently, but at the time, I had a prescription for modafinil and was taking it, and it was great and. Uh, you know, that came from a lab in, in the U.S. Not to say that United States labs are, like, amazing. I mean, maybe they are. I really don't know anything about labs in other countries. But this ph pharmaceutical laboratory that made modafinil was somewhere else, not in the United States, right? And um, I definitely noticed a difference between the modafinil that I got from that company and that lab. <laughs> Y'all are making guesses about the lab, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, it was Sun Pharmaceuticals, uh, the lab was Sun Pharmaceuticals. So, and and I, I'll say Sun Pharmaceuticals because there are many companies that source them as a product. So uh, I'm not, you know, y'all can research those and find out who they are. So it's not technically one company that I'm bashing. Um, I just, I'm not into like ruin people's brands, but some of those, particularly one of those companies doesn't even exist anymore. So, um, Anyway, there was a purity test. There was a third-party purity test done on the modafinil produced by Sun Pharmaceuticals. I was gonna make a YouTube video about this and didn't uh, for various reasons. And uh, it got really bad results, really bad reviews. And that pharmaceutical lab is not great. So for those of you who order modafinil online, um, and I hope you're doing it legally, uh, then uh, you, you know, watch out for that lab because even, even just in my subjective experience of taking it, I knew that it was different. And I knew that the modafinil that I got from my physician was way better than this, this modafinil from some, some pharmaceuticals. So Nootropics Depot is a good vendor. Um, you know, the racetams certainly, certainly, and, and, um, I don't know if the video I made about this is still up or not, but this was actually a big topic of discussion at the conference this weekend. Um, yeah, the racetams with a choline source certainly uh, make them more effective for a significant number of people. So that's not a recommendation from me because I don't give those because I can only talk about myself and my experiences, but in the literature, absolutely. Um, and I don't want to talk about dosages either. Ryan Ballow does on his channel though, so you can check him out. Um, for dosages, uh, and also some of the books, um, Smart Drugs 1 and 2, which are kind of old and have somewhat outdated information. We'll talk about dosages. And then, and then there's this guy at the conference who's writing, he's writing a new book on nootropics, and it's amazing, guys. It's not, it's not like, it's not like a 50-page PDF. So Ryan, <laughs> Ryan Ballow's nootropics book is pretty good. 
excuse me, he self, you know, he self published it. Um, but so, there's a guy at the conference who's writing Trevor's book and it's gonna blow smart drugs one and two out of the water. It's gonna be the most comprehensive guide to especially the racetams and the history of Neutro. It's, it's gonna be amazing. I taught, I'm gonna, I, I, I interviewed the guy, I, I watched his talk and um, I'm gonna, that's gonna be a whole nother video. I have a lot of videos coming from the pipeline from this conference, so. Um, Boom. But Michelle asks if I'll be more active on YouTube again. Yes, yes, absolutely. This is why I went to the conference. This is why I went to Body Hacking Con this weekend. I filmed a bunch of content. I interviewed a bunch of people and Jack was with me from Epic Beasts and I have a lot of raw footage that I'm turning into videos. I also want to do more live streaming, right? I also want to do more live streaming because this is an easy way for me to connect with y'all. Right now I'm live streaming from my phone uh, I just got this, uh, what is it, an iPhone X or something. Um, I've never live streamed from this phone before, except for like just this weekend when I was like, you know, at the conference. Um, but I'm hooked up to Wi-Fi, streaming with this iPhone X. We'll see how good it is. I, and then I'm, the next time I live stream, or the next time, in the future, in the near future when I live stream, I did buy for like 50 bucks a 4K webcam. So I'll put that right here. And then I'll use this software, it's called OBS, and I'll be able to, um, I'll be able to like pull up websites so you can see my screen share. So for example, I was on Reddit and I saw this, a link to this study that had, it's like, okay, if um, it, was a, it was a correlative uh, study, right? Or that was what was found, that was the finding of the study. It's okay, people with low grip strength tend to have I don't remember how they measured it, but low cognitive performance. So I was like, that was really interesting. You know, I got a psych psychological evaluation done when I was 19, when I was going through the Lyme disease stuff. And I was like, it was found that I had low grip strength. And my cognitive, you know, it was, my cognitive abilities were, I don't even know if you can swear on YouTube anymore. What can you do on YouTube? Can you, I don't even know what you can get banned for on YouTube anymore. Um, my cognitive abilities were effed up, right? And uh, I, I just don't want to say it, right? I don't say it. And um, so, so, and I was like, oh, that's interesting because you know, grip strength is a part of that test, and my grip strength was way below average. Um, so, and, and you know, if that were to be a video, or I could do it a live stream really quickly, just boom, boom, live stream, video camera here, 4K, right? I don't know if the iPhone X has 4K with the front facing camera, which is what I'm using. 4K, screen share. One side of the video, you see my screen. Other side of the video, you see me. Boom. Yeah? Then I can make content every day pretty easily. Because editing videos takes a long time. Like an hour. Or more. All right, now I can show you. This is just water. But this is my, this is my wine. My wine swirling. I don't, I need to do dishes. This is what I need to do. Which is why I'm drinking out of a wine glass. I know there's this huge thing about alcohol and biohacking. I'm going to get into that right now. Um, but, uh. But uh, if you're gonna drink alcohol, there's some, there's some strategies. Okay, um, so yeah, that answers that question. I'll be more active on YouTube again. Michelle asks if I'm in college still. No, um, so I'm 31. I graduated high school when I was 17. And then um, I lived all over. I lived, uh, so I grew up in um, Buffalo, New York. I was born in Houston, Texas, grew up in Buffalo, New York. Graduated high school in Buffalo, New York when I was 17. And then I lived in uh, Massachusetts, I, I lived in Houston, I lived in Buffalo, I lived in, drum roll, grrr, New Hampshire. Okay, in New Hampshire, in 19, I was bitten by a tick right here. It was bedded into me. I was uh, living with my stepbrother and I was in his backyard. I was, remember I was, you know, 19 years old, just like drinking a beer. I was underage drinking. Ah. And uh, you get banned on YouTube for talking about drinking beer when you're 19. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, just drinking this beer, and I noticed, you know, something in my hand. I was like, oh, I'm digging it out. And I was a little buzzed, right? I'm digging it out, and I pulled this tick out of my hand. And, and, and that's how I got the Lyme disease. So then I was bonked for a while. And then I finally started my undergraduate degree at University of Houston in 2008, started political science, ended up graduating with an English degree. And then I went to grad school in Boulder, Colorado at Naropa University, which is a private Buddhist school. Yeah, like you have private Catholic schools, you have private Buddhist schools too. So, and then uh, <laughs> um, went to graduate school for uh, transpersonal psychology. And um, I graduated, I was there, uh, I think it all was said and done like in 2014 or 15, 15? Yeah, so no muscle in college, but that gives you that gives you a great, a great little, a great little summary of my education. Um, 
Hubby DC says, you must be on nootropics right now, Steve. Ha ha. Ha ha. I'll let y'all, I'll let y'all, I'll let y'all ruminate on that one. See, see what y'all think. Where does this energy come from? Where does this, hey guys, what's going on? See, where does, where, is that nootropics? Is that nootropics? Is that me? I don't know. Um, how's it going, Lewis from Brotropics? We still use affiliate links, but we word it like, check it out here. And we always tell the negatives we hate about the nootropics. Also, thanks for the contact. Great, yeah, so um, YouTube has a trust and safety team that's very small. I, I work for a cloud computing company and I work in cybersecurity, so I am familiar with, like, with how these like content management processes work. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of people at the company I work for, you know, come from Twitter or whatever. So like I, and, and trust and safety team, team yeah, trust and safety teams with um, actual human beings manually reviewing content are very small. A lot of content uh, removal is automated. So um, while my YouTube content would be like, don't use affiliate links, um, yeah, y'all might be able to use them still and be fine for uh, nootropics. And, uh, and you just haven't gotten caught yet. So, but I'm glad that, I'm glad that you're doing well and um, maybe YouTube has changed your policy and just, they haven't told me about it. I don't know. YouTube's policies are vague on purpose, right? It's like, so they can remove the content they want. And you know, it's their platform. I'm playing on someone else's platform. This is not, this is not, you know, stevecronentube.com. Someone wants to buy that domain, go for it. <laughs> Um, Haley says you saved our channel. So, uh, right. I'm going to, I want to see, is it youtube.com? <clears throat> YouTube.com slash Hey Lou. I'm on my, uh, yeah. Is that what it is? Let's check this out. 404 not found. Yeah. Link your channel in the chat, dude. I'd like, I'd like to check it out. Um, Hanify says, where have you been for six months? Not making YouTube videos. Um, I have been living here in Houston. I have been working through a lot of stuff. Um, you know, they're a big part, and this is not something I have talked about too much. All right, we're 30 minutes in, 10 viewers, or 11 viewers, and um, 30 minutes in, I'm gonna do another round of likes, all right? And this is awkward, ask for it. But I would love if y'all could give a thumbs up on this video if you haven't already, give it a like. Why? Because even though someone might be subscribed to me on YouTube, if I make a video, they're not gonna see it in their feed because my SEO rankings plummeted after I was banned and my content was deleted. And I guess there's this new feature where you have to have a bell icon or something. So um, I really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up. YouTube will be like, oh, people are engaging in this video. Maybe it's important. Maybe we'll send it to people who are subscribed to Steve Cronin. So, and thank you, we got to 15 likes. So I, I really appreciate that. Uh, so yeah, the past six months, um, I've been doing a lot of reading. Uh, I've, I never stopped learning. Uh, reading, working my day job in cybersecurity. Um, and not only was Lyme disease one thing I had to deal with when I was a teenager, but I went through a significant amount of persistent uh, childhood trauma when I was very, very young, like starting around five years old. And I've been working through that with psychotherapy. Psychotherapy, great tool in a biohacker's tool chest, right? Biohacking, right? Art and science of optimizing physical and mental processes or physiological and mental processes to achieve a desired result. And the mind is a very important part of that. And there's a lot of different tools and techniques you can use uh, to, to have a desired outcome with your mind. Contemplative practices are definitely in right now, i.e. meditation, where the cornerstone of them is meditation. Um, but meditation definitely isn't a substitute for psychotherapy and, and some people, it's a great tool for them. So, and, and really it's a learning experience about like more learning about yourself and who you are and your own mind and it's great stuff. So I've been doing a lot of that for the past six months and it's been great. Um, all right, Mark says, uh, I was warned not to make videos on YouTube for caffeine.me or mindturning.com. Haven't heard of those websites? I'm gonna check them out. Who warned you about that? Kind of killed the marketing concept, yeah. Haley says, I run Brotropics and you have me as a contact to a YouTube moderator. I have no idea what a YouTube moderator is, dude. I really don't. Brotropics. Okay, youtube.com slash brotropics. Let me see if I, if I spelled that correctly. 
Yeah, okay. Well, um, cool. Does that mean I get to moderate? I don't understand what that means. I'll have to look that up. Um, Milkbone says, I deleted that since the wording may affect your channel. Um, oh, when you said that you, that you would vote for me for president. That's funny. Um, all right. Jack Grady Magic says, you're going to write Steve Cronin in for a libertarian presidential nominee. I don't, I don't understand. I don't talk about politics, guy. I haven't talked about politics on YouTube in like five years. So... I don't know, maybe like, is something, is something coming through? Like, because I don't, like, like, I guess maybe you just see my own videos, but like, um, yeah, I don't wanna like, I don't, like my only political like, like beliefs revolve around freedom, especially around freedom to do um, biohacking, right? To, to be able to change your body the way you want to without someone telling you you can't under the penalty of being locked in a cage or being fined and money taken from you. So um, I guess that's libertarian, but, but, but I would hope that a lot of people believe in that. I don't wanna alienate people who don't have the same political beliefs as me. Like, I think that's kind of silly. Uh, but I guess, I guess if someone doesn't believe in biohacking, then they probably wouldn't be watching me anyway, a biohacking YouTube channel, right? Um, Sol asks if modafinil from India is good. I don't know. It depends on, is, is, if Sun Pharmaceuticals is in India and it's from them, um, I would say no, cause they, at least, I, maybe there's been newer purity tests, but they failed, they failed one pretty badly. Biohazard says, how do you buy a modafinil legally? Um, I don't know. It depends on where you are in the United States. You need a prescription from your physician, uh, to get it. What choline source is good? Right. I made a video called, are all choline sources equal? And um, if it's not up right now, what I have done is I, I have in my queue, I've uploaded a bunch of video, my old videos um, that I had backed up and have, some, have them set to private and just like one to one on one, I'm just gonna open them up and have them published again. Um, CD, CDP Choline is my favorite, um, but, uh, but uh, watch out for that video because I go into depth, I go into depth in that. Um, Alrighty then, is choline bitrate gold? Bitrate, uh, I think you might mean by tartrate. And is gold, is that mean are you asking if it's good? Yeah, it's good, check out my choline video. It's upcoming, if not up there already. Michelle asks, do you know Nootropic Syndicate? I think they shut down, but I don't know why. I heard they had great Phenobut. Hmm. Nootropic Syndicate must have been after the time I stopped making videos because I've never heard of them and I have never taken any of the products. Just water, dudes. Oh, right, about the alcohol and biohacking. So, I mean, obviously alcohol is a toxin, right? I really like wine. I really enjoy wine, like the education of it mostly. Um, there was a period of time where I like wanted to be like a sommelier or whatever, um, but I do have I do have several several books on wine, and uh, and you know if you drink if you drink a dry wine, um, something like a Cabernet or something like Beaujolais, um, so Cabernet grapes from like Bordeaux or Gamay grapes Gamay grapes from Beaujolais, and you have one glass, it's about a gram of sugar. These are your high tannic red wines. Um, so, so obviously like if alcohol is a toxin and if you drink it in excess, that, that contradicts biohacking, right? Um, but certainly it's better to drink a glass of wine uh, with one gram of sugar than it is to have a beer with a bunch of calories, right? When people drink a lot of beer, a lot of them tend to gain a lot of weight. Um, vodka, vodka, I suppose, would be, would be one depending but I don't want to drink vodka straight <laughs> uh, or with soda water, but vodka would be one where it's no sugar. But anyway, this is just water. This is just, the reason I'm drinking out of a wine glass is because I need to, I need to do my dishes. All right, back to the questions. Are you in other research chemicals and or psychedelics? <sighs> what, can I, can I talk about this on youtube.com? Um, yeah. Not research chemicals, although is MDMA considered? Didn't, so isn't Alexander Shulgin create MDMA? Would that be considered a research chemical or no? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think very safe 
and where it's legal um, applications of psychedelics in a therapeutic sense, um, which MAPS is, you know, working on with psilocybin mushrooms and I believe MDMA um, to have these be able to be used in therapy to have, you know, really great breakthroughs. Um, I think in a therapeutic sense they're great. Um, yeah, I've used MDMA once and psilocybin mushrooms twice. Yep. And I did a, mm -mm, that's not true. I did psilocybin mushrooms twice. Um, one at a threshold dose, one at a, like a two gram dose. And then I did, I did a few trials of micro dosing, but those were not really, they, they weren't like, you don't really feel anything from it. Um, and then I have taken one, it was, I did, I did only one just to kind of try it out, more of an allergy test, um, microdose of LSD. The thing is about psychedelics is that, so if you look at the etymology of the word psychedelic, um, it pretty much means to like make what is not conscious about yourself conscious. And there's a lot of beautiful things about the unconscious mind that you can discover with the conscious mind that are parts of you that you can experience and, and they can really improve you. Um, I guess a side effect could be cognitive enhancement and in that way, maybe some psychedelics under certain circumstances could have nootropic properties. Um, but you know, there is a lot of parts of ourselves that are not so awesome. Everyone, you know, Carl Jung called it the shadow, right? And uh, there's parts of ourselves, this unconscious material that is, that is kind of hard to deal with. And so for example, if that, if that, if that comes up in your conscious mind uh, and you're not ready for it, because your subconscious is always trying to like balance out what you can handle as a, as a person, yeah? Um, then you could have what is described as a bad trip, right? And um, that's actually what, you know, the last time I took a psychedelic was almost two years ago. And it was the uh, psilocybin mushrooms where for about six to eight hours, I was like just reliving childhood trauma and it was horrible. Um, but it had a good outcome because that's what prompted me to start psychotherapy and start working through some of that stuff. So, um, Am I into psychedelics in terms of reading about them and researching them? Yes, absolutely. I want to like, I'm like, wish I could reach all the books from my bookshelf over there. Um, on, I love reading about psychedelics and I love reading about um, what they do and how we think they work and other people who take them. But, but my experience with them is pretty, is pretty mild. Um, Alrighty, Lift Mode's Fenibut is pretty. Yeah, Lift Mode is a pretty good is a pretty good vendor as well. That definitely when I was when I was researching like good vendors, that was definitely one of them. Um, man, I'm missing so many chats. Oh my god, guys. Okay, I am I am gonna I am gonna just power through these like they're like they're like they're questions. But I love my rambling. Okay, I really like doing it. When I first started making YouTube videos, they were like 11 minutes long and people were like, stop rambling, we don't like it. And it's like, well, I like making rambly YouTube videos. Like, I feel great when I do that. Um, all right. But I'm, I am gonna, I am gonna, because I did title this a Q&A, right? It's a Q&A. All right, uh, so Mark says, good to have you back. Hard to find honest info. Thank you, I appreciate that. I always try to be sincere and genuine as possible on YouTube. Even this personality, hey guys, what's going on, secret and blah, is coming from a sincere place that is anxious on camera and needs to act a little goofy in order to feel comfortable making videos. Biohazard said, the video is very choppy, just saying. Well, I'm 44 minutes into this and I'm just reading this comment. Hey, how about we do a poll right now and I'll scroll to the bottom of the chat. Is the video choppy for y'all? And we'll see what up because I'm, I am connected to my Wi-Fi via my phone and I turned off my other devices except for this desktop and this laptop. So like my other computer's off, my PlayStation is off, any other, any other Wi-Fi connected device should be, oh, that's not true. I have, I have a camera, um, a Wi-Fi camera. So it's for like a security cam. Okay, um, Michelle says videos are fine for her. Audio solid, great. All right, going through more of your comments because I have just been rambling about things that I hope you find interesting. Um, 
But this video is really about, this video is really about connecting with y'all, doing a long form Q&A, and also telling y'all where I've been and what I'm doing and that I do have a future on YouTube, and that is the message of this. Soul says he knew someone that died because of Lyme disease. I unfortunately do as well. When I got Lyme disease, I got synced into a Lyme community of people. Not everyone makes it, and it's really, really sad, and it's really hard, um, and I'm very lucky that I only had it for two years and that it was something I was able to overcome. Um, all right, so this refresh, the chat refreshes, I'm gonna lose my place. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, Brotropics, one's entertainment. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check out your channel later, I'm gonna figure out what YouTube moderator means, and we're gonna, we're gonna get on that. Michelle asked if I would consider yerba mate nootropic. I would say yes. Um, some people would say no, right? Um, so nootropic uh, is essentially, if you look at the etymology of the, of the word nootropic, it means reaching toward the mind, um, which, you know, that's open for interpretation, right? Um, uh, so etymology and root words, I think is a great way to start with making definitions, but but as you start, people branch out with different interpretations and make different definitions of words, right? Words, and I wanna say something right now, actually. Words that people use come from within, right? Words and language are a product of who you are as a unique and individual person, okay? And so I find it kind of, I struggle. I find it um, struggling. <laughs> I find it, uh, that I find that I get a little nervous when um, people disagree on definitions of words like nootropics, for example, in a, in a way that's, in a way that is uh, hateful and violent, all right? And I, I, I need, I like, maybe some of y'all aren't gonna agree with me and that's totally fine. Um, and I think that disagreements are great and I think talking about them is great and interacting with people is great. Um, but you know, if, if someone doesn't own the definition of a word like nootropics, for example, right? And we're all going to have different ideas of what this means. We, and, and we have start place language, like where does language come from? Okay. Language is a filter, right? We have the way, the theory of like perception and how we interact with reality, right? Which has epistemology, epistem, ugh, I can never say this word, epistemology, um, epistemological roots and, uh, so like it starts with sensation, right? Human body, five senses, okay? Well, at least five that we've been identified, right? We get an information. Sensation turns into perception. What is perception? Perception is a filtering process largely done unconsciously so that the data you're receiving from the world around you can make sense to you and make sense to your conscious mind. Language is one of these filters involved in perception. And, and how are perceptions, how are perceptions formed? They're formed based on your experiences, based on your culture, how you grew up, what language you speak. And therefore, when you express yourself, it's from a very unique kind of place. And it's, it's genuine and it's sincere. And um, when people, when people in, in, in whatever community, but including in the nootropics community, um, are like, no, this is how you define nootropics. And anyone else is completely wrong. Like, Great. I'm stating that is awesome because we can compare disagreements and figure out where we all are because we all don't have to be on the same level of agreeing with each other. But when it's done in a way where it's like shutting other people out and being like, you can't speak that way and you can't say those words and you can't have those definitions because your unique self does not matter and we're going to have this thought control system around it because we're not going to respect what language is and it's a filter and where it comes from, which is sensation perception, filters, including language, and then output, which is you as a person. I think that's messed up. And that, if there was ever, ever any kind of political rant, political, politically inclined rant that I've been on, my mouth is getting dry because I'm used to talking this long, uh, on YouTube in the past five years, there you go. At least it's 50 minutes into a live stream, so. Oh man, all right. Going through these comments here. Uh, message where someone retracted a message. Whoa. All right. I hope it was fun. I hope it was a cool message. If it was a hateful message, you don't have to retract it. You can repost it. That's fine. I'm not going to be offended by the hateful messages. I, I have a YouTube channel, right? That I think they're I think they're kind of funny. 
Someone, some guy did a whole YouTube video. It was not hateful at all though. Some guy did a whole YouTube video called, you should, I think it's still up, you should Google it. It's called, um, does Steve Cronin know what he's talking about? And the guy is either misunderstanding my uses of metaphor in my videos as misunderstanding metaphor as literal speech or intentionally um, just wanted to defame me. So yeah, I would consider your, I would consider your Mate a nootropic. Nootropic uh, is, in my opinion, is equivalent with cognitive enhancer and um, anything that enhances cognition, which doesn't have to be a pill. It can be tea, it can be running, it can be jogging. I consider it to be a nootropic. Um, Soul says, Soul says it depends. Great, great. So we have this agreement here. All right, I wanna read about this. Um, Jack says, really important question, Steve. Are you subscribed to PewDiePie? Uh, no, I don't think I've ever watched any of his videos. I don't, I've been on YouTube since 2000, well, I, I made my YouTube account in 2005 or 2006, and then I made, started making videos in 2008 or 2009. I was like, the most popular person I've ever been subscribed to, I mean, I guess I could look my subscriptions, but uh, that boxy girl from like 2009, I mean, like, I don't know. I'm really, I'm into the niche YouTube communities. I don't, the top 10 trending, I don't even look at those videos, so. Um, all right, Biohazard says, don't read my comments, they've been answered already. Well, I'm glad that, I'm glad that y'all are answering each other's questions as well. Um, people are saying, sometimes video's choppy, sometimes video's not choppy. Okay, cool, I'm getting to the end of the, of the comments now, this is great. All right, hey, so, now that I'm at this final page of comments, Keep them coming, by the way. I'm not, I'm not done. We're gonna keep this going until I pass out or until my phone dies. Although technically, I probably plug in my charger. Um, but here we go. So 17 of you are watching. We have 18 likes. If you have tuned in and not given this video a thumbs up yet, have not given it a like, uh, please consider doing so. Why would I ask this? Because if um, someone is subscribed to a YouTube channel and they, and they make a new video, um, they not, may not be alerted that that person has made a new video unless YouTube tells them. And YouTube doesn't give people alerts or put them in their subscription feeds that they've made a new video um, unless the video is engaged with. And for someone like me, I'll make a video um, and I'll have 20, you know, 1,000 subscribers and then 100 people will watch it and I'll be like, hmm. Then why? It's because, well, A, it's because I didn't make videos for a year, but also B, because YouTube deleted a, um, a bunch of, well, ban my channel and, and my content, and, uh, and now the SEO stuff is all messed up. So I really appreciate if you give a like or a thumbs up this video. Thanks. Jack says, real question. I thought, you, I thought your first question was a real question. So this is your humor. Okay, I like it, great. What do you think is the best application for Kratom? Ooh, another, another thing you cannot talk about on YouTube, Kratom. Um, I thought I'd turn my phone on airplane mode. Oh, Wi-Fi's on. I just got a notification. Um, alrighty. Uh, I know you don't talk about dosage. More so, is the smaller microdoses better or the larger doses better? Yeah, so, um, there, so first I guess it's like, what are you using Kratom for, right? Um, and secondly, um, well, yeah, that actually is the main question that I need to know is what are you using Kratom for? Um, Kratom, in terms of its uses, there's a lot of historical documentation of what it's been used for just in terms of what people have done with the plant. Um, but in terms of like many repeated, actually well-funded, reputable studies of Kratom for specific uses, there's not so many of them. So in a, from a scientific perspective, it's kind of like up in the air, like, but you know, if you're a biohacker, um, you're, you're, you're more likely to be on this bleeding edge of territory where, yeah, like you are going to, um, you are going to be, to be, sorry, I'm getting distracted because, because I hope, I hope someone doesn't call my phone in the middle of this live stream. I'll set up my 4K camera next time. Um, you are going to be on the more bleeding edge of like trying stuff out, right? And, and being, being an experimenter, being, being the, I think like Tim Ferriss calls himself a, a human guinea pig or something. It's kind of like that. Um, so a lot of people use it for pain relief as, a, a, as an alternative to stuff like Vicodin and whatnot. Um, there's this documentary on Netflix called Leaf of Faith, uh, Leaf, L-E-A-F of Faith, um, that's all about Kratom. And actually, on Netflix, uh, I'm in that documentary. <laughs> I was like, oh, I didn't even know. He took clips from my YouTube channel um, back when I was talking about Kratom. 
Um, cause, cause I think that Kratom has uses as a nootropic. I think it has uses in pain relief. I know it has use in pain relief for me because, because I have used it instead of Vicodin because I have, well, I'm not going to go into another medical thing. Um, but I was having some back issues, um, and took it instead of the Vicodin that my doctor prescribed me. Um, and I think it has uses for anti-anxiety and stress relief and motivation and mood. Um, it's, you know, Kratom is, is, is related to the coffee plant and, um, uh, but so, so first, like what are you using it for? Um, but, and, and, and not that I can recommend something to you, but what I can say about me is that uh, the strain of Kratom matters, the quality of Kratom matters, um, the OPMS uh, brand of Kratom, uh, yeah, I don't wanna say for sure that I think it's one of the higher end ones because I haven't actually looked at data and I don't know if they're, they've been like third party tested as a lab. Um, or if their product was, has been third-party tested, but the um, OPM, I think that's the brand name, um, it's incredibly potent, it's incredibly expensive, and I suspect, just based on my personal uses, usage of really bad Kratom versus what I think might be good Kratom, might be a deep, but so sourcing matters, right? And then, um, and then also, I would say that, like, like let's, let's have a real conversation, like, I hope this is always a real conversation, but to have a real conversation here, like, if you take too much Kratom, like, you're probably gonna get high. Okay, like, nothing wrong with that, really. Um, but, uh, so, what I mean by that is, like, you gotta find a dose that's right for you, and, and I can't say what that is, and I tend to take lower amounts of Kratom for the mood and motivation, and then if I have pain relief, uh, which I've only used it for pain relief once, well, several times over the series of one week, um, I, my doses were higher, so. Boom, Kratom. Apparently you can't talk about that on YouTube anymore. Jo Jonathan Rosen had a bunch of Kratom videos that were flagged. Um, I don't know. Oh, what happened? I accidentally turned, it, turned my... I'm trying to have my background like stuff on the computer. Not that you can see it really well, but I actually turned my, my thing on. Alrighty, so... Not a moderator. Oh, this is Brotropics channel again. I love how we keep circling back to Brotropics. That's great. What is your YouTube channel? Not a moderator, lol, just someone who could unban my channel. Right, right. Um, they're called Community something or another. Um, and if you search Steve Cronin banned or like Steve Cronin nootropics into YouTube, or not into YouTube, into Google, you'll come up with a Vice article that talks about how my channel was banned and, and among others and then how also like um, Adrian Jeffries, who did, who wrote the article, she also wrote about um, these. I forget what they're called, but they're like YouTube volunteers who like help people get their channels unbanned. Um, it's great. So if you have are running in issues with your own YouTube channel and your own content being banned, um, you can learn something from that Vice article for sure. All right, um, y'all are talking about kratom dosing. Great. I would much rather y'all talk about it amongst yourselves than me talk about it. Um, all right, uh, Austin Sandoval asks, can a nootropic be like electrical, like AI consciousness? We have that consciousness can be nootropic, be used in like a energy form from food. I'm not sure I really understand that question. Can so a nootropic can be anything as long as it enhances cognition in my opinion, right? So running can be a nootropic, taking prastam is a nootropic, um, um, yerba mate, I think, is nootropic. The coffee and L-theanine, I think, is nootropic. Um, so it doesn't have to, so, so by electrical, if you're talking about like a T, oh, transcranial direct stimulation. So if you're talking about TCDS, um, then yeah, sure. Um, that, that can be used as a nootropic. Um, and that, for those that who don't know, uh, transcranial direct stimulation is, is, is like shocking your brain, right? Um, <laughs> but, but, but through like transcranial, right? Through, beyond. Tran trans is either short for the word transcendent as it is used in transpersonal psychology um, or, or which, which has its roots in, in, in beyond. Uh, alrighty, so. Is R modafinil better than modafinil? All right, so my only experiences with the different types of modafinil were from that really bad lab. So I'm gonna say I don't know on that one. Um, my, in my experience, out of everything, modafinil is what worked best for me, but also I got it from, you know, 
my doctor, so uh, with a good, a good, a good uh, pharmacy. Michelle Light says, smash that like button. That's what people say. Okay, that's what this is. You know, I, I, I know I have like some YouTube quirks about me where, you know, pe I guess it's a thing. Like, people start their videos the same way every time. And so for the longest time, I was like, hey guys, what's going on, Steve Cronin? La, 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 la. That's coming up, right? And then it would, right? All that stuff would happen. Um, but I guess one of these other YouTube sayings is, all right, guys, better smash that like button. We would say, uh, click the big red button or hit that subscribe button, smash that, I don't know. Uh, that's funny, but thanks, Michelle. Michelle says, smash that like button. Appreciate that. Um, Biohazard says, actual question for you, Steve, or anyone, what nootropic would you recommend most to get into nootropics? Okay, I think I will reinterpret your question as, what is a good entry nootropic that will have a large, potentially have a larger received effect than others? Also, can you still talk about Kratom on YouTube? Carpo, 719, and all of them are back up now. I'm not familiar with the Kratom YouTubers, um, but if those are, if Carpo is a Kratom YouTuber and he's back up, I think that's great. I don't, I don't know what I can or can't talk about on YouTube. It's all vague and up in the air, and, um, you know, I feel like I was banned for no reason, so, but other people feel like I was banned. You know, after my channel was banned, yeah, a lot of y'all, a lot of you guys who have YouTube channels made videos being like, where did Steve Cronin go? Why was he banned? This sucks. And I really appreciate that because, you know, searching my name into YouTube or going to my YouTube channel, it just said disabled, gone, everything. But when I searched my name, like I found videos of people being like, hey, where's Steve Cronin? And that was really great. That was really great to see. Um, of course, there was also people, there was this one guy, what was his name? He does like a daily news thing. And there's this one guy and he was like, Steve Cronin was pimping out these nootropics and I agree with YouTube on this one. I agree that he should have been banned. I was like, what? What is this guy? And he was making statements about me that were really inaccurate, um, probably because he hadn't seen my videos and he was just reading the Vice article. And uh, I messaged him on Twitter and I was like, hey, I wanna do a very friendly and fair, but funny video response to you about how you agree that I should have been banned. And I asked him for permission to use like video from his YouTube video that I could like reply to. Um, Cause I know people can do DMCA request takedowns, um, which I don't like after being unbanned, I didn't want to get into that, right? Um, and uh, he never responded. I'll get the name of that YouTuber though. I'll put it in the description of the video after, after I, I'm not live anymore because uh, Maybe y'all can reach out to him. His name was, his first name might've been Matt. I'll have to find it. I can find it right now, but you know, I'm, I'm in, in the middle of the live stream. Um, so I don't know what you can talk about on YouTube or not. Uh, it's, it's a mystery to me as I'm sure it's a mystery to everybody. So to answer your question um, about the entry, the gateway nootropic, it's definitely gonna be different for different people. Um, I have found that, okay. Um, Modafinil for sure, if they can get it legally, which you should. Um, well, okay, let me hit the pause button on that. When I say that you should, I mean that I think you should get it legally, not because I believe that it should be regulated, just because I want everyone, including myself, to be protected from a, you know, force that has a monopoly on the use of like force, right? Like i.e. a government that bans something. Um, so I say that not because, and this was an issue with the Kratom. I was like, when the Kratom, when the, when the DEA was going after Kratom and I made a video that <laughs> got like a hundred dislikes, um, probably because I wasn't being clear. Um, oh, and Kratom, Kratom might be an answer for this, by the way, uh, to this question. Um, bullet, bulletproof coffee. Um, uh, modafinil, and then uh, there was a nasal spray one, but I, I don't recall what it was. Uh, that was pretty good. But just to go on, um, I made a video about, about it was something, something the title was like, why you shouldn't um, stock up on Kratom before it becomes illegal. And it wasn't, the way the title was worded, I was like, man, I really fucked that up because, oop, there, eh, ban me for that YouTube. I was like, man, I really fucked that up because I, uh, I was, you know, for, if you actually watch the video, it wasn't my intention to tell people what to do. Um, and it wasn't my intention to, the intention of the video wasn't to tell people what to do. The intention of the video was also not to support any kind of regulation for Kratom or anything really. 
um, it was just about safety and um, protecting yourself from 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 the DEA. So, um, all right. Soul Cube says caffeine and L-theanine for beginners. Definitely agree with that. That's a good one. Uh, all is one says how about sleep? Okay, great. So this is one. Um, I have like top five hacks for sleep. It's either on my channel now or it's one of the ones that was deleted and is in the queue to be re-uploaded. Um, there is uh, a really good ebook um, from biohacker.center. This is the um, this is authored by Timu Arena among other people from the uh, Biohacker Center in Finland. And they have a chapter on sleep that is amazing. That's great. Um, and and uh, so you can check that out if my video is not up. Um, and if it's not up now, it will be soon because I'm, I'm re-uploading them. And a bunch of them are in the queue set to private where I'm just every day, boom, 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 open them up, right? Michelle says, remember the salvia craze? Oh man. <laughs> it was like, so I was in a fraternity in college and uh, I'm gonna feel like you're getting red talking about this. I also have a light beating down on me. I was in a fraternity in college and um, I, I, salvia is illegal to purchase and use in Texas now, but in the time it was not. And uh, yeah, I used salvia. I was kind of like known as like the salvia dude in like 2010. That's a separate video. I don't know if I want to get into it on live stream because it's going to be like a 15 minute like monologue, which, which I don't know if y'all are up for. But um, this, this roots back to the question about psychedelics because salvia is a psychedelic. I'm going to turn my air down real quick because uh, sitting here under this light for an hour is more hot than I thought. I don't know if I've ever done a live stream this long before. This is pretty cool. Alrighty. Um, so yeah, I do remember the salvia craze. I do, I do. Um, but you know, I, I, I'm smiling while I'm saying that because because I remember I'm remembering my experiences and some of them were really funny and all of them were really amazing. And um, and then I'm smiling because I think it's just ridiculous that uh, the government will ban and regulate things. But but I do want to point out that um, you know. Just like someone can take an antibiotic, like Leviquin, for example, someone can take Leviquin and then be paralyzed for the rest of their lives. Um, the same thing applies to, to something, something like, like salvia. And so there's definitely, like, I definitely don't want to minimize or discount or dismiss any bad experiences people have had with anything, really. So, um, but I remember the salvia craze, for sure. Alrighty. Um, uh, oh, Brotropic says he prefers adrafinil. Um, right, it is, it is related to modafinil. Um, he says tolerance. Oh my God, Jonathan Rosalind says greetings from Bulgaria. Jonathan Rosalind is watching from Limitless Mindset. <laughs> the comment was probably sent a while ago. <laughs> okay, so Jonathan, I've been wanting to sync up with you. Um, I had a great time at the, at the body hacking conference in Austin. And um, I, uh, I, uh, I thought about, like, I thought about, some of the stuff that happened that you would like, and I don't want to like reveal it right now because because it's forthcoming. Um, but I'm gonna hit you up because I want to. So yeah, every, Jonathan, everyone check out his channel. If you Google Limitless Mindset, you go to his website, and then uh, he has his YouTube channel as well. Um, which Jonathan's Jonathan Jonathan's great. Oh Jonathan, uh, Jonathan, I called you out earlier in the video too. So that, but thanks for thanks for the comment. Uh, I'm kind of really excited there. Um, yeah, the thing about the thing about the draft though is like. Um, it's not like really tolerated by your liver very well. So you gotta be careful how many days you take it in a row. Um, uh, because you don't wanna, and, 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 I, and I have used it and I got mine from a now defunct nootropics company called New Star Nootropics and um, it didn't really do much for me, just, just to let you know. But you know, everyone has different experiences, so. Um, all right, uh, ALC, good nootropic. Yeah, I love ALC. Um, I, I took that, that's one I took a lot when I had Lyme, by the way. It was a combination of ALC, NAC, and ALA, um, and acetylcysteine, acetylcarnitine, and alkylopoic acid. Um, Soul Cube says, and ALT is even better. I never had that. Um, Carpa was a kratom guy, got taken down. Then your channel came back, and so did his. Great. I'm glad. I'm 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 glad kratom channels are back. I I think I think kratom is 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 great. Um, okay, great, great. 
I love the telly says uh, Kratom made him or her puke. Yeah, all right. This is good and bad, right? It's bad because you don't want to vomit, right? But it's good because it's your body's natural response to taking in too much of something when it becomes toxic, all right? Um, so you throwing up is a better alternative to you getting really sick and overdosing, right? So, um, and this is something that, uh, you know, with, with some of the pharmaceuticals, like depending on in the manner in which you take them, um, you might get the effects of the drug that make you pass, pass out before you can, your body reacts and then, you know, with vomiting and then, and then, and it's horrible. And that's one of the ways that people can die. And, uh, but, um, so, it, you know, that response from Kratom is good and it's a good signal your body gave you. Um, and, uh, and luckily Kratom isn't fucking heroin, right? <laughs> like, so, um, but I want to make it clear that I am not a professional on Kratom in a medical sense. And, um, I do not speak to its safety, uh, with any authority. So, um, speaking very vaguely and yeah, Kratom has made me thrown up too. Then I need to take less. Um, alrighty. So Smalley cat says the really important question is, do you like ramen? I do. <laughs> she says, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, dude. Or Molly do do that. I, I don't, um, yeah, I love ramen, but I, 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 you know, try to do a low carb diet because if I, the more carbs I eat, the more weight I gain. George says wine is the best nootropic. Uh, <laughs> wine, af after a few glasses of wine, you might have the illusion that it's a good nootropic. This is just water. Um, all right, um, doesn't sound like dosing would have been the issue. Maybe it was a bad batch. Always oh, speaking about the Kratom possibly with the, with the throwing up. Yeah, sourcing quality is great. Alrighty, so people are talking about psychedelics. People are talking about salvias. Um, someone says a drafinol. George McGraw says a, a drafinol sucks. And um, I, relatively, from my own individual perspective, would agree with that. All right, 19 viewers. Um, if we can do another round of likes, another round of hitting that thumbs up button, because. The more likes this video receives, the more YouTube will actually show this video to people who are subscribed to me so they can see that I'm making content again and that I'm back. So if y'all wouldn't mind hitting the like button, hitting the thumbs up button, I would really appreciate it. And other people who are subscribed to my, oh, greetings from Poland, from Lisu. Thank you. Um, I am half Polish. That's not really relevant to uh, anything, but I just thought I'd say. Um, uh, yeah, because my, my, my dad is, uh, my dad's side of the family is from Poland and my mom's side of the family is from Germany. So, you know, and I think Poland was the first company or the first company. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, subconscious never lies. Um, I think Poland was the first country that Nazi Germany invaded, if I remember correctly. So that's kind of a cool half and half. But my family left Germany under the Weimar Republic. So that was before, that was before Nazi Germany. Um, already, uh, people are talking about sleep, haven't slept in weeks. So George, you're taking a modafinil or modafinil analog or something related to modafinil and you haven't slept in weeks. Is it your intention not to sleep? Sleeping is, you know, getting an hour of sleep is an intrepid. Jonathan says, great, good to see you back on YouTube. Cool, thanks. I'm glad that you, uh, I'm glad that you stuck through and kept watching this live stream where I addressed, I addressed your comment. Uh, yeah, and, and, and it's, good to, it's good to be back and make videos again. I didn't, even, I, didn't, I didn't intend to be gone for 75 minutes here, but I have been, so. Whoa. Um, Ray cycles the draft with phenylprastam. I like, ooh, that's a good answer to that question before about entryway nootropic. I, I, do, I really do like phenylprastam. Um, uh, people say they wouldn't buy from head shops. Yeah, most head shops, um, these are like your smoke shops, don't provide good quality Kratom. Some do, but most don't provide good quality anything, including back when they used to sell salvia. Um, and then, right, it does map food and what you eat and having a full stomach, empty stomach, um, I've noticed actually has a, 
a, a, an effect on, on Kratom and, and, and particularly nausea, so. Um, Soul says he shows my videos to his dog. He seems to like it. Yeah, probably because I'm like, hey guys, let's go see Kratom. And, and, and I'm sure animals like all the flashing and craziness and stuff. That's great. Um, I have a dog. She's sleeping on my bed. I think she's like uh, so used to my craziness now that she just like she's just like mm, whatever. Just like good old, good old. Um. Alrighty, cool. And y'all are having a conversation with yourself against some tropics. That's great. So I uh, wrote notes for this video. I haven't looked at them yet. Uh, 76 minutes in, let's see if I covered what I wanted to cover. Um, alrighty, so... I want to talk about how I was doing live streams. This is iPhone X, I want to stream on the computer within 4K and do more videos with live streaming. Um, li I wrote live daily, uh, that's funny, back from Bada Hacks, but yeah, I did, I covered everything. That's awesome. So I think we're gonna wrap this up. I think we're gonna wrap this up. So uh, thanks y'all for watching, I really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't liked the video yet, please do, um, so more people can see uh, this video. After it's, after it's done live, it'll then be published to my channel, and then, and then my subscribers are gonna be like, huh, why did Steve post a 77 minute video on YouTube, and do I wanna listen to him ramble on for 77 minutes? Probably not. Uh, but that's it for now, guys. Uh, take care. Um, thanks for y'all. Y'all, you know, Biohazard. A lot of you, Soul Cube, uh, stayed stayed for this like entire hour. So that's great. Um, and I will.